What's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the word contamination? You're probably thinking about cars, factories, airplanes, maybe cow farts. But have you ever wondered how much your house contributes to climate change? Well, your house, as everything else on this planet, has an ecological footprint. That is, the impact of something or someone on the environment, expressed as the amount of land required to sustain their use of natural resources. Let's take this little house as an example. It's made of the two most used construction materials, cement and steel. To know the footprint of any material, we first need to know where it's coming from. Cement's raw material is limestone. It's crushed and then mixed with other materials to improve its properties. Then, it's heated up to 1450 degrees in a rotation kiln, and as a result, we get clinker. The clinker is cooled down, and as we put some additions, we get the widely known construction material, cement. Steel is made of an alloy of iron and carbon. This mixture is melted at 1650 degrees, which is 200 degrees more than cement. Then, it's separated from the impurities and shaped into the final form. Now let's take a look at the footprints. The main footprint that these materials have is the CO2 footprint. Steel, as we said, has a very high melting point, so a big amount of energy is needed to produce and shape it. Furthermore, during its making process in the basic oxygen furnace, to create steel from the alloy, it emits 1,987 tons of CO2 per ton of steel, quite a big number. However, we have to keep in mind that one of the most important qualities of steel is that it has one of the highest recovery rates for recycling. This recycling process is done in a different furnace, the electric arc furnace. On this one, steel only emits 0.575 tons of CO2 per ton of steel, much lower. So more than 1,500 tons of CO2 are saved each time we use recycled steel instead of mined one. For the production of cement, we need to heat up the limestone with additions to 1,450 degrees C. While at this high temperature, there's a chemical process happening that emits a lot of CO2. Limestone, mainly calcium carbonate, is split into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. This process is where 60% of the CO2 emissions in the production of cement happen. The recycling of cement is more complicated than the one of steel. Imagine our little house. The walls are made of cement, which is stabilized with steel bars. If we want to recycle the steel bars, we don't need to destroy them because we can transport them as one, whereas the cement walls will be more difficult to just take as one. We need to crush them into powder again, and still then, it might be a less quality cement, because we need to add more water, which will give it higher porosity. Knowing all of this, we need to take into account that steel has one of the highest volume to strength radios, so it's not needed in such large amounts compared to cement. For example, we know that in 2016, 1628.5 million tons of steel were produced, while that same year, the production of cement was almost 4,200 million tons, more than twice the steel production. So we can deduce that nowadays, the footprint caused by cement is larger than the one of steel. There is another kind of footprint related to the cement and steel production. This is the water footprint. The water footprint measures the amount of water used to produce each of the goods and services we use and includes water consumption and pollution throughout the full production cycle, from the supply chain to the end user. We can divide this footprint into parts. Blue water footprint is water that has been sourced from surface or groundwater resources, and is either evaporated, incorporated into a product, or taken from one body of water and returned to another. Gray water footprint is the amount of fresh water required to assimilate pollutants to meet specific water quality standards. There is also another construction material that deserves an appearance in this video. Plaster is a widely used construction material all over the world, 
being most common in North American housing. Plaster is produced by heating gypsum, which is obtained through a mining process. But in the past years, scientists have developed a technique to obtain gypsum that counters global warming and climate change. Fluid gas desulfurization consists of removing sulfur dioxide from fluid gases produced by fossil fuel power plants and mixing it with hydrated lime to later produce gypsum. FGD gypsum even has a higher purity than most natural gypsum, making this technique both good for the environment and for construction purposes. Now, not only do you know what impact your house has on Earth, but also the impact civil engineering has on it, and some processes to try to counter it. We hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, and subscribe if you want more content about civil engineering. Thanks for watching!